have been offered $500, you turned it down. Uh, is there any chance that other journalists or other individuals or entities may have been approached by not just this Dialogue Earth, but by other foreign entities, you know, to uh, scuttle major projects in Nigeria? Absolutely, 100%. Hello, my great and wonderful people. We welcome you once again to our today's episode of this program. And today we get some videos and messages for our team. We want to be so one quickly the review to you concerning the things we want to be saying if they happen right now for inside this country, Nigeria. Just as you rightly see some from the introduction of this very brokers, the recent video interview when Ibisi would receive from human rights activist when Ibisi in him now David Hunding. This is my common side of this recent time to review to the whole public concerning what the international body they do for Nigeria to keep each and every one of us for the state of poverty when Ibisi all of us they experience Today, for this very aspect, now concerning Aliko Dangote refinery, when it be say in your new build, although I will talk small, I will leave you to listen to the full interview by David Hundein, where it be say if they review every details of the evil acts by this international body to make sure see each and every one of us day for inside this poverty, and no one feel lift up his or her head for this country. Nigeria. The reason why basically they talk all these things, when they basically would they talk, people would they think, say, we just they carry the talk to incite the public. People with greater evidence, though they come outside to make sure, say, yes, you see what they would talk about. Although, before we bring you that video, we equally get this other message when basically would they receive from Peter Obi, when they say, it take come outside to speak to the federal government of Nigeria concerning the presidential jets when EBC the seas. And the title of this one says Seizures of Presidential Jets. FG owns Nigerians and explanations. Which is in another word, the presidential jets when EBC the international body sees the federal government of Nigeria led by Amebola Tinebu get explanation to give Nigerians why EBC things happen like that. All right, maybe we do small reading from inside this very one. Maybe we understand the details of this message before we bring you that video from David Hundein. And as we put our hand deep for inside this matter, the comicos understand see the presidential candidates of the Labour Party, when it be said, they say they call LP for the 2023 pool, when it be said in the Napita Obito Commerce to toss the federal government of Nigeria, get explanation when it be said in need to give Nigerians. Concerning the seizure, which is when it be said that they seize our presidential jets for France. And still on top of the matter, the comic of the stance in Peter Obi described this very seizure, which is to seize assets when it be said it belongs to Nigerian people because of the order of French courts. Say na international embarrassment when it be said it revealed the failure of leadership for house. And again, the contour see Peter Obi revealed this very word for the series of tweets when it be seen released for his ando on Thursday. And as we put our hand deep again, the comic on the stance, he also go ahead to query the secrets when it be seen he associates with the way when it be seen they buy and also sell the presidential jets. This one a property when it be seen it belongs to Nigerian people. Obito say the trade the international news. For the seizure of three jets, when it be said it belongs to Nigeria's presidential fleets. Now, one among the many embarrassing things, when it be said they expose the way, when it be said our leadership they fail and the attitude to the rule of law. All right, my great and wonderful people. Now, only this one will take from this very message, when it be said we receive right now from Peter Obi, when it be the presidential candidate of Labour Party, when it be said it take commerce to speak. Concerning the way when it be say French courts they pass order to make sure say they seize Nigeria presidential jets. Not be only one with the talk about three here, according to what we receive right now. You they see the situation when it be say all of us they face. 
Today they tell us say we they patient for inside poverty. Say we Nigeria not get money to manage the situation when they say they before each and every one of us. For instance, you know how much one presidential jet costs? Not the talk of three. I believe say when this news come as I say, I'm a Bolatinibu and APC they hide. They acquire presidential jets. A lot of people say now lie. Abi say the House of Senate led by Akbabio. Off your mic, Mr. Off your mic, pass a law to give go ahead to Amebola Tinibu and APC government to go secretly buy presidential jets. A lot of us say a lie. Abi, she waited there, Zugu for Bush. It don't come out now. She, it don't come out before the eyes of the public. And it don't come out for good. We continue to detect these people. Anything when it be say you do in evil way, when it be say you think say people not go know. Now the smoke now it will expose you. Now he expose Amebola Tenebo and the old senators and the old house of representative members. So she will not see them. This one an international embarrassment. And to add to that very one, this one in France, when it be say Amebola Tenebo, they fly, enter, fly in, fly out. Today, all of us can attest to this very fact. Say Amebola Tenebo don't even make France become your own first home for this administration just like as the old predecessor which is azu buhari they make london which is uk to be your own first home now so i'm a black neighbor also make french or france to become your own first home today what it happen waiting on a thing say on what they do nigerians now on a self na e on the user they do all right, that's all we're talking about this matter. We'll leave you to share your opinion with us on the comment section, even as we leave you to listen to David Hundehim concerning another embarrassment when ABC international body they pour upon Nigerians to keep us for this state of poverty when ABC all of us they experience today. All right, listen to this very one. We'll come back. For more. To other stories now, Nigerian investigative journalist David Hondai has alleged that an international NGO, Dialogue F, is mobilizing a media campaign against Nigeria's first local refinery. In a series of posts on Twitter over the weekend, Hondai said the NGO tried to bribe him to write an article discrediting Dangote refinery. He claimed he was offered 800,000 naira, that's the equivalent of 500 US dollars to write a smear piece against the refinery under the pretext of environmental concerns. Well, earlier I spoke to David Hunde for more on this story. I began by asking him why he decided to go public with his allegations. I thought that it's in the public interest. Um, people need to know that um, there are external interests that have some sort of a stake or some sort of an interest in um, the preservation of the, the energy poverty that Nigeria and West Africa have historically faced. Um, I don't believe that uh, my, my going public with it in itself is going to change the world or anything like that. I don't think my, my profile is that powerful. However, I think that the power of public exposure is one of the last few real powers that regular people in this part of the world still have. I feel like um, a lot of the power that these foreign actors wield can be wielded because it's wielded in secret, because people don't even know that it exists. So prior to this incident, for example, if you were to come out and tell people that there are players in the, in the global development space or the NGO space who would very much like the status quo to be preserved in terms of Africa being poor and Nigeria suffering from energy poverty, despite being one of the world's largest energy exporters, it will sound like it's a conspiracy theory. But here you have hard evidence of a Western NGO, UK NGO funded by American money, quietly moving around, trying to arrange the pieces on the chessboard to create a narrative war against what objectively, regardless of whatever one thinks about the owner of the refinery, objectively that refinery which by the way is also the largest single investment ever made in the history of west africa 20 billion dollars and there's this narrative war against this refinery being fought essentially by white people in in london and new york and then they're trying to use an african face to be the spearhead of this narrative war that does not sit right with me and i thought the public needed to know mm. 
And it makes one wonder whether, you know, there's a link between this and why Nigeria's uh, four refineries have refused uh, to work for over 10, um, 10 years now, over a decade now. Uh, do you think that this is the, the MO of foreign entities uh, to stop uh, development, not only in Nigeria, but in Africa as a whole? I mean, even before this happened, I, I, I happen to have quite close relationships with several people who work in and around the energy space. I myself work in the energy space, although in the sort of renewable part of the space. And one thing you will always hear is that getting funding for energy projects in Africa is almost impossible nowadays because you will hear things like ESG. You hear things like the energy transition. Um, uh, fossil fuels are, are are bad. So basically, you're trying to get a pipeline constructed from Uganda, which recently discovered oil and gas reserves. So you're trying to get a pipeline constructed from Uganda through Tanzania to the port. So Uganda can actually benefit from its oil reserves. It can actually export oil and earn revenue to build infrastructure. Right, because most of Nigeria's infrastructure, for example, was built with oil revenue. Uganda doesn't have that infrastructure because they simply don't have the money. And now they have the opportunity to earn that money using that oil revenue. And then the financing to actually build the pipeline is being blocked because they are being told that you are not allowed to uh, build any energy infrastructure that has to do with, with fossil fuel because of emissions. Meanwhile, Africa is responsible for 3.9% of global emissions. We don't register on the ranking. We might as well not exist. So what emissions are we cutting? We don't have anything to cut. You are looking at a starving man. His ribs are showing. This person is malnourished. He's about to drop dead. They are telling him that he needs to go to the gym and exercise and lose weight. That's what they're telling us. It makes no sense. Yeah, this is what... Right? Uh, this, this is, is not what just... Dialogue, a, this, uh, not, this is a, a Pan-African phenomenon right. prior to this. Sorry, sorry. So this is what uh, Dialogue Earth uh, said you should do in carrying out a spare campaign uh, against the Dangote uh, refinery. And I'm wondering, uh, now you have been offered $500, you turned it down. Uh, is there any chance that other journalists or other individuals or entities may have been approached by not just this Dialogue Earth, but by other foreign entities, you know, to uh, scuttle major projects in Nigeria? Absolutely, 100%. Um, first of all, with this particular in instance, I'm pretty sure that I wasn't the only journalist that they would have reached out to. I'm quite sure, even though I can't prove that yet. Um, but even in, in the aftermath of going public, they already sort of mobilized a narrative response. So I'm not going to mention the name of the news platform or the journalist involved, but there's already uh, been that pushback where they've sponsored articles in two major Nigerian online news mediums and referred to what I did as sensationalist, that essentially it's not that big a deal, that I kind of misrepresented what was being done, and I'm and basically that I'm an attention seeker, and I did it to, I don't know, <laughs> to, to chase clout or something, that like, it's really not that big a deal. That's the narrative that they've mobilized, and they've sponsored it and put it on two Nigerian media platforms already, who are happy to publish it, as they always are. Um, moving away from Nigeria, I've, I've, I have personal knowledge of incidents like this where for example, the EACOP, uh, which is a, a pipeline that is supposed to connect Uganda and Tanzania to the port in Tanzania. There are, there are native Ugandans and Tanzanians who have been paid by these foreign civil society actors. They've been, their um, visas to the US have been facilitated to so basically go to the US and speak to American uh, audiences, including financiers and politicians and whatnot and tell those people, influential people, that funding a project that is going to lift their African country out of poverty is bad for the environment, right? And these people will listen to them because it's, a, it's an African saying it. Obviously, you cannot love an African's country more than the African himself. Meanwhile, they are being paid to do that. That may not necessarily be even what they believe. It's the NGO that is paying them money to do that. I think there's a very serious moral problem with that. Mm. And I'm wondering why $500? I mean, uh, is that how uh, cheap these uh, foreign bodies uh, see African journalists, you know, like yourself? And is this the first time you'll be approached, you know, to do such a hatchet job? 
And how did you, uh, you know, respond or react um, if it's not the first time? So clearly, that is how much they think African journalists, uh, or, or, or how much they think it takes to compromise an African journalist or to co-opt an African journalist's voice. Um, because, you know, whether we like to, to hear it or not, the truth is that journalism on the continent is just generally not a very financially rewarded activity for most practitioners. So I'm guessing the market price that they that they have become used to, that this is what usually gets people to to say how high when they ask them to jump is this much. Um, it's, it's not the first time that I've been approached in terms of being commissioned to write a story or to write an article. It's a fairly common thing actually within the journalism space. Um, if you have a good writing style that people like, or if you have a large audience, you get approached. And it's not the first one that I've turned down for ideological reasons. You know, sometimes I'll turn it down. Maybe it's some entity that wants me to write about Israel versus Palestine. And I'm like, you know what? I don't really feel comfortable writing about this. I don't feel like I personally should be commenting on this. I don't feel like I personally have a stake and I don't feel like I should interfere in this, so I turn it down. But this is the first time that someone has come to me with an offer to write about something that affects my country and that affects me potentially and basically told me to write against my own interests. Mm. How do you expect, um, what kind of outcome do you expect after this um, revelation, especially on the part of government? What are your expectations? Um, I expect the government to do absolutely nothing, as they always do. Um, the purpose of this wasn't to try and get a response from the government, but it was to educate the public, because I think that it's only the public now that can actually rescue this thing. Because clearly, the government of the day, at the very least, um, doesn't really seem to care. I'm, I'm being charitable in saying this, but at the very least, doesn't really seem to care whether Dangote Refinery takes off or not. I think that again, regardless of whatever anyone's personal feelings and opinions are about the person of Aliko Dangote, I think it would be a disaster for Nigeria and for Africa if a $20 billion investment dies. That absolutely should not happen. But I think the Nigerian government is, at the very least, completely lukewarm about it. Um, we've seen uh, officials from, from the, uh, oil regulators come out and make statements that sound like it's a competitor that made the statement, we saw an official come out and say that well, the uh, Dangote Refineries uh, diesel um, has sulfur content that is above regulatory limits. And that in any case, it shouldn't be that one man shouldn't supply the energy, shouldn't control the energy market for Nigeria, which is true. But again, it shouldn't be a regulator coming out to say that because it almost sounds as if the government has been antagonistic toward a private business in Nigeria, which is incredible. So um, I, I, my hope in, in going public with this was for Nigerian people to understand that there is, there is, there's a network of interests that would very much like to preserve Nigerian poverty, that would very much like to see them continue being poor. And that for the first time, um, there is an opportunity to sort of very, very frontally and very visually oppose these interests, because as I said earlier, how these interests have generally worked in the past is by operating in the shadows. Occasionally, when they meet people like myself, people in the media space, they're able to get their way one way or the other. But now they were unfortunate enough to run into someone like me who, you know, has a reputation for being a bit of a hothead. And I guess they regret that now. And I guess this has the, the fact that people can now see this hard evidence that this is the sort of skullduggery going on in the background, that this is not a conspiracy theory, this is real, this happened, this is in black and white, then I think that does an important job of sort of rewiring the mental architecture of Nigeria so that they understand that um, you actually do have enemies, both local and international, and you need to start being serious about being an active citizen because if you're not, there are people who are very happy to sort of occupy that space for you and keep you... All right, my great and wonderful people, I believe you don't hear everything yourself. You know, we'll pass as he talk and reach like this. Thank God for the wisdom of David, who they, when he be say, it it all, say, you know, they review all these things because of, say, maybe they will feel do anything about them. Make Nigerians not they aware. Add this evidence, join the one when be say they don't get before. Although we know we'll get anything to do. Yes, now so it will still continue. Even as in don't reject and people they want to be say they accept them to do even worse than waiting in the review right now. 
Now the state when it be say all of us they na be this. We day for inside ocean and soap they enter our eyes. Before the evil come to individual, ask yourself what they will don't do to the governments of the day, the leaders of the day. It come from there. Yes, it come from there. <laughs> All right, may we not bother ourselves over all these things. You ask yourself, according to the question when we say that journalist asked just now, you feel tell us, say, now still the same way, now it make our refineries not the work, then you answer that question for us on the comment section. How the refinery of a country, more than two or three, not fit function, for how many, how many decades now? Yes, this on a part and parcel of the whole issue. Now, mouth, now in within the thought, say we be get refinery because they don't already sell them to this international body, put their money for pocket. They don't share the money. Now, just ordinary structure, now in the seat, they want to be seen, you know, whatever work because the deal has already been done. All right, I'll leave you to share your own opinion with us on the comment section. We'll leave God to intervene for our matter, even as we draw the line here. We will see you again when we see you. Remember, we love you all. Bye-bye.